Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healthcare IT Today. On today's episode, we're going to dive into a new report called The Digital Health Tipping Point from Panda Health. Inside that report are some really fascinating results. It shows, for example, that patient self-scheduling is going to be one of the top implemented solutions in 2024. Also, a surprising result is that only 35% of hospitals feel that they're getting value from their chatbot implementation. Well, I'm going to sit down with Ryan Bankston from Panda Health to talk about some of these results. Let's get to it. Ryan, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Great to be here. Appreciate the opportunity and uh, good to speak with you again, Colin. Yeah. You know, last time we got together, we were talking about uh, a, a previous report you had come out. And once again, we're getting together this time to talk about a new report that you've just released. I'm excited yeah. for that. Likewise. Thank you. Now, before we dive into the report, can you just give us a quick introduction, your name, role, and a little bit about Panda Health? Yeah. So uh, Ryan Bankston, President and Chief Operating Officer at Panda Health. Uh, Panda was formed several years ago, uh, basically to be a uh, utility for health systems as they navigate digital health. So understanding what their use cases are, uh, looking through the noise of digital health and being able to identify uh, the best solutions and, and best products and technologies out there to, to meet the health system's needs. As we kind of talked about at the top there, you've just released, or Panda has just released a new report. It's called the Digital Health Tipping Point. Can you tell me a little bit more about the genesis of that report and what's inside it? Yeah, so you mentioned the previous report, which was the Great Shakeup, um, and that was one that we did uh, last fall, looking at the likelihood of digital health churn in the industry. So looking at the satisfaction levels that hospitals had with those uh, solutions, combined with when those contracts were expiring. And that prompted a lot of questions around what have been uh, the experiences of our health systems with these solutions. Where are they finding value? Where are they seeing more future value? Where are solutions uh, not hitting the mark? And so the tipping point was a follow-up report to the great shakeup to dig into some of those unanswered questions. And what, what were some of those uh, findings that you have in the report? What was the one that stood out for you? Yeah. Um, I think it was honestly the level of uh, unknown value in a lot of these solutions. So um, we'll get into it in a minute, I'm sure, you know, where where some of the solutions had um, high marks for ROI delivered or future satisfaction or future value, expected value. Um, and others were, you know, uh, not seen as valuable, but there was a high degree of uncertainty. And I think that was um, probably the most telling and not, not surprising, but I think most telling uh, feature of the report was was how challenging it is in many cases to measure the value of some of these solutions or for these health systems to really make sure they're getting the value for the investment that they're making. Yeah, that, that was one thing that I really liked about this report is it really kind of dove deep into the thinking behind some of these solutions. Like it wasn't about whether or not you needed it, although that did kind of come through in the report. It was a lot more around, do you see value? You know, is this something you're actually going to adopt? And and uh, yeah, some of the numbers were, were pretty surprising. In fact, one of the ones um, that stood out for me was... Your, the survey or the results from the report showed that the most in-demand digital solution was patient self-scheduling. Yep. And, and further, the report said the adoption was going to increase from 34% to approximately 75%, more than double by the yep. end of 2024. What, what do you make of, of that? Yeah, um, I think that's actually a great uh, encapsulation of why we call the report the tipping point. Um, Self-service patient scheduling has, has been around for a while. Um, it's one of those solutions that if you look at the report is also listed as having one of the highest ROIs. Um, so it's not too surprising that that would have higher rates of adoption. But then the question is, why is the rate of adoption only been at 34%? And, and part of that is needing to get those proof points. Um, patient self-scheduling, tremendous ROI uh, driven by, of course, you know the labor and productivity savings that, that you can have through those but also by reducing the amount of no-shows or open appointments in a schedule because the technology allows uh, cancellations to be more quickly uh, backfilled and things of that nature. So tremendous ROI. At the same time, a high degree of change management and workflow redesign that needs to go into that. This isn't one of those solutions that just kind of plug and play and all of a sudden things are easier. It takes a lot of effort. And so there's been a degree of time that's been required to get those proof points, 
to get that change in place and start to demonstrate that. And now as enough of that value has been demonstrated, it's reaching that tipping point, whereas a lot of organizations are looking for high value impact. Uh, that's a place to go, knowing it's going to take a, a level of effort to get there, but that the return has been demonstrated and proven over time. Yeah. And I, and I think along with that, um, patient expectations have changed, right? Over the last couple of years, our expectations as individuals have changed because we're now used to that kind of technology or that kind of capability from all of our other uh, uh, institutions that we deal with, whether it's a bank, whether it's a dentist, uh, you know, uh, whether it's our, you know, our car appointment, right? Like right. we can do all this stuff online, you know, then we yep. go to the hospital and we wonder why we can't. <laughs> no, I can, I can fully book a, a flight, check in, you know, board the plane, check my bags, do everything on my phone. Um, but, but, you know, not so easy with the healthcare system. So you're absolutely right about consumer expectations. Now, uh, you know, in their defense, you know, booking an appointment, especially when you have, when you're seeing multiple providers, is very difficult. So uh, there's certainly uh, some appointments that are challenging, very challenging to do. But I think what we're talking about here is, you know, there are a lot of straightforward appointments. It's a single provider that you're seeing, a single doc that you're seeing, and so, yeah. I mean, I I hope that what's in the report will come true, where we see a doubling of that yeah. kind of technology being implemented. Well, but, I think to that point real quick, Colin, is, you know, the the focus really started in primary care. So to your point, you know, straightforward appointments, you've got a designated primary care physician, you can easily schedule a singular appointment. What has been more difficult is getting into specialty appointments where there is a higher degree of complexity and variability. Uh, and that's, again, where over time, those proof points have been demonstrated. And, and now you're seeing the, the rate of adoption increase. Ryan, there was one surprising result from the report, and it stands in direct contrast to what we were just talking about in terms of patient experience. The, your report showed that only 35% of hospitals feel that they're getting a positive ROI from the chatbots on their websites. That is shockingly low to me. Why do you think that is? So I actually think it's important to note the other aspect of that, which is when you hear 35% seeing a positive ROI, you might expect that therefore 65% are not. And if you actually look at the detailed report, nearly 50% responded with they don't know. Uh, so I think it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the difficulty in measuring the ROI of some of these solutions, especially in, in categories like chatbots and others that focus on patient engagement, um, patient satisfaction, patient experience much more difficult to quantify a hard ROI out of those things. Where there is a hard ROI, again, is in some of the labor savings where you're able to reduce calls to your call center or improve you know, navigation to some of your other automated tools. Um, but again, you've almost got an a attribution issue there of how much of that value can I really ascribe to specifically the chatbot versus you know, the myriad of other change management and technologies and processes that hospitals are continually trying to improve. And so um, back in 2017, I believe there was a, a report that PwC put out really thinking about how do you encapsulate the ROI of digital health in a more comprehensive way? Uh, and it isn't all, you know, the hard dollar value, but I think in the context of, of the survey, when you think about hard dollar savings, some of those patient experience uh, type products uh, just present a little bit more of a, of a challenge for the health systems. And there was one final set of findings from the digital health tipping point report that you uh, have released. And, and this was an odd one for me because on one hand, the report showed that hospital leaders felt that they had felt that the technology that had the most positive impact was going to be remote patient monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, yet the lowest on that same list of where they thought uh, the most positively about a solution was hospital at home. It was at the very bottom of that list. Aren't those two the same, the, the sort of two sides of the same coin? To some extent, yes. I mean, obviously, uh, RPM is a key component of a hospital at home uh, solution or, or offering. Um, obviously, hospital at home is, is far more complex. And we, we tend to think of it at, at Panda Health in terms of care at home and, and the continuum of that. I think when you hear hospital at home, you immediately go to, you know, inpatient care in the home. And, and there's a, a myriad of different um, offerings from, you know, post-acute follow-ups and chronic condition management and some more ambulatory type functions all the way to full hospital at home. And so RPM has also been used in a lot of those other contexts uh, for a longer period of time. And so again, kind of going back to what we mentioned earlier, you've got more proof points, you've got more demonstrated value and that time horizon of 
where are you going to get value from that over the next couple of years is probably easier to see. Um, by contrast, hospital at home requires much more upfront investment infrastructure costs. Most of the health systems that have begun working on hospital at home programs uh, are starting with relatively small pilots trying to get their proof points. And this is just one of those capabilities that it's hard to do a small pilot because of the amount of infrastructure and upfront costs that's required as well as change management and all of that. So you almost have to get to some level of scale with hospital at home before you start to see the, the true value. And again, it's a, it's a newer capability. You're, you're in, you know, seeing more risk um, being brought into the, the, the circumstances because you're moving patients that the physicians and providers are used to treating an acute facility and moving them out. And that, that's creating some skepticism and some anxiety. Um, and so it's, it's pacing the level of adoption. Um, I, I've heard others in the in the industry think about this, and I, I think it's right. It's similar to uh, where we were with ambulatory surgery centers back in the 70s. Um, you know, when they first started, you could do two or three procedures in an ASC, but it was very limited um, and very controlled. And there was a lot of skepticism at that time how far you could really go. Now, the same procedures we were doing that had a you know five six day inpatient stay in the 70s and 80s are now outpatient procedures you can do in an ASC. And they outnumber the number of hospitals in the country by by a significant margin. Um, and so I, I do think that, you know, hospital at home is a technology that is here to stay and, and will evolve over time. Uh, but I think it's got a longer horizon uh, to get those proof points, reimbursement levels, regulatory issues, all of those things that, that factor in. Ryan, for, for hospital leaders who are reading this report or looking at this report, what do you think their key takeaway from this report should be? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think it's that you really need to do your homework. Um, a lot of the, you know, there's a lot of noise out there, as I mentioned, the reason Pando was founded was to, to try and help with this process, but there continues to be a lot of noise, a lot of confusion. You've got to get clear use cases. You've got to really understand what problems you're trying to solve uh, and, and challenge the uh, digital health companies to, to be able to demonstrate that. Um, obviously, there's always going to be new and emerging technologies, and you're going to want to do some pilots and test things out, and, and that's all well and good. But as you're looking to make investments, the the switching costs and the risk of a failed solution implementation are so high, uh, it's only going to contribute to further burnout, further frustration, you know, further erosion of margins, all those things you're trying to solve by putting these technologies in place. Uh, and so making sure that that you've got, you know, trusted advice, you're connecting with your peers, you're you're getting the proof points you need. Uh, and can make a, a solid business case, I think is as important as ever. I, you know, I don't think that's ever gone away, but I think it, it continues to be as important as ever. So on the other side, for, for digital health companies, pe people who are providing the solutions to, to the healthcare systems, what warning or opportunity should they take away from, from this report? Yeah. Um, you know, a, a colleague of mine mentioned that that so many of these digital health companies uh, still use very broad, generic descriptions of what they do, yet at the same time, overly technically complex language that is is difficult to decipher. And, and at the end of the day, um, what the health systems are looking for is a clear understanding of the problem you solve, how you solve it, the ROI, the benefit, the value that's, that's going to be achieved from this how long or how difficult it's going to be to implement, you know, all those basic things. And it's, it's very difficult to get that information today um, without, you know, almost going all the way to the point of, of a vendor selection. And, and so many of these organizations are really just trying to understand, you know, much early on in the process, what, what can I be doing? What should I be doing? What's available out there? And so I guess my, my encouragement to the uh, digital health technology companies out there is to continue to clarify in language the health systems understand, you know, again, what you're going to do, what the value is, and and how do you get to a, a positive result? And it sounds, you know, sounds kind of obvious, but I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there um, to to improve that. Well, you're appealing to my inner marketer. I love that uh, to be very. <laughs> you're telling companies basically to be very clear on your value to to the health systems, and that's that's yep. always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But Ryan, you've shared a lot of great information with us today. W where can people go to download? the Digital Health Tipping Point Report, and learn more about Panda Health. Yep. So uh, visit our website, uh, panda.health. Um, we've got several case studies, and uh, you can find not only the Tipping Point Report, 
um, but also our annual market survey, uh, the Great Shakeup Report, and a lot of other good material that uh, that we're putting out in this in this category. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for being on our program. I can't wait for your next report, and we'll have you back, <laughs> and we'll talk about that one too. Sounds great. Look forward to it, Colin. Thank you. Appreciate it. I want to thank Ryan for coming on camera with me and talking about the Digital Health Tipping Point report that they had produced. I really found Ryan's answer to my question around the difference between remote patient monitoring and hospital at home, why there was such a delta in terms of the perceived impact on the future of healthcare. I thought his answer was really, really good. The fact that RPM is sort of more immediate term, easier to implement, easier to wrap your arms around. Whereas hospital home is much more complex, much more difficult, and potentially something in the future that organizations will look at. And hey, if you enjoyed this interview as much as I did, please like and subscribe. Also, head on over to healthcareittoday.com where you can find more great content like this. I'm Colin Hung. Thanks for being here, and I'll catch you on the next episode.